let's talk a little bit about sourcing and syncing. Um, if you follow the, the all-in-one DC schematic, as far as your inputs go, um, you're probably going to be syncing. That is, you're going to put 24 volts to the common of these terminals. So 24 volts goes in, and then it's going to come out, it's going to go through the device, and then it's going to end up at common. That's, that's syncing. If you're sourcing, then you're basically going to put the common here, and then the 24 volts will go out to the device and then come back. Um, it, it's an option. It, you know, if you have the, the choice, just go, go with the syncing. That's the way I'm going to show syncing. We're going to tie these commons all to 24 volts DC, and then they're going to go out to whatever the device. Here's, a, here's the limit switches. So that's, that's sourcing and, and uh, syncing. Uh, it's just something that we probably should cover and, and, and talk about a little bit. We talked a little bit about the, I'm following, I have the all-in-one DC installation guide as a resource for this discussion. We talked about the cat board. Centroid has, if you're going to buy it from them, they have two versions. They have a cat board low and a cat board high. Cat board low is good for up to 125 volts. And the cap board high is good to up to 240 volts AC. Okay, there's a danger here. When, these, when this device, that capacitor, gets charged up, normally they have a bleed-off resistor across the terminals. If they don't, that capacitor is going to stay charged. If you happen to touch the terminals, you're going to get bit, and you can get bit hard, uh, maybe even lethally. So that's another argument for just buying the catboard assembly from Centroid rather than making your own. Um, it's important that there's a bleed resistor across these two terminals. And even with that bleed resistor, it doesn't drain that capacitor instantly. It, it can take a few minutes to get it down, especially if you're rectifying 110 volts AC and you're, you're going to have the potential of 170 volts DC on that capacitor across its terminals. So take a meter and check it. DC, check those terminals before you start working around, before you're disconnecting things, that sort of thing. And you know, when you've tested it and you've checked it, um, you know, on, this is another thing about meters. Make sure you test the meter on a known good voltage source first to make sure that your meter is reading correctly and it's working properly before you go testing something. The last thing you want to do is, oh, you put your meter on you put your meter there and you think it's dead and it's not because a fuse is blowing the meter, the meter's you know, malfunctioned. So make sure you test your meter, make sure you test your test equipment on known uh, voltage sources before you test on um, whatever it is that you're testing. So the, this, this capacitor, and you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw it in right now, is you've got a resistor that that it's called a bleed resistor of the proper value that needs to go across those terminals to bring that capacitor down once power is removed from it to bleed it down. So that's, that's, that's very crucial. That's just uh, talking about the, uh, the cap board and the, uh, this, this rectifies your AC and gets your DC voltage out. Okay, we're going to wire our cap board. It's going to, we're going to get power off of here, it's going to go to the cap board, then it's going to go through the e-stop contactor, and then it's going to end up over um, on our H2, VM minus, and VM plus. So that's the next subsection that we're going to do. So the uh, cap board gets its power from TB1 2A, that's a black wire. So here's TB1 2A, and we're going to go up, and we're going to go over, and we're going to go into that incoming surge suppressor. So that's that. And then the next one is our neutral. We're going to wire up our neutral now. And neutral is coming off of TB15A. This is our neutral side. We're going to go up and we're going to land it here. Remember the little a little curly cue, it's a sine wave, so that's, that's where we're wiring this bridge. All right, so now we've got power going up to our bridge. The bridge converts AC to a very choppy DC signal. 
It's oversimplifying, but that's what it does. So now, coming off, coming off our bridge, we have our DC. We have to filter it. So we use red. Come over, and we're going on a positive terminal. The terminal with a plus. Okay? And then off of our negative terminal, we go to our minus. So now we, we're, our capacitor is connected, and the capacitor can filter this choppy, nasty DC coming out of the bridge rectifier and clean it up. So that's where we're at now. Now we've got to get it out of here, and we've got to end up to our H2 VM minus and VM plus. And to do that, we're going to go through our e-stop contactor first. And the next stop is our positive goes to CNT1. CNT1 is the e-stop contactor. CNT's contactor. So this is CNT1. Okay? That's the way it is on the print. So we're going to CNT1 with our positive L4. L4. So we're going to be here with our positive. So now we come off of this, the positive. We're to L4. Okay, and then our negative comes off the capacitor and goes to CNT1 and it goes to L3. That's here. So we're going to come off of this. Clean that up a little bit. To L3. So now we've got AC. We're rectifying the, the AC to the capacitor and over. Now, this circuit is for direct rectification. If you have 180 volt motors, then this is what you do, okay? This is direct rectification. What's gonna give you is 180 volts, or 170 volts here. I'll backtrack and we'll put the transformer in the circuit and we'll do the same thing there, okay? So now, off the, the, the backside here, we wanna get over to our all one DC. We're going from T4 to plus VM. So T4, we're going to plus VM. Okay? And then we're going to CNT1, T3. To our VM minus. So now, through this system, we have 170 volts DC here. When the e-stop contactor closes, we haven't drawn the, that circuit yet. Just keep in the back of your mind. It's not there yet, these are open. So until the contactor closes, which means everything's in normal state, our e-stop button is normally closed and the, the all one DC is happy, it's up online, everything's good, no faults. Then this contactor closes and now we've got voltage over here which in turn can be sent out through H3, 4, and 5, which goes to our servo motors. Okay, this is where you connect your servo motors. And they're labeled, and there's a shield. Your cable should have a shield, a drain wire, that gets, that gets landed on these shield terminals, okay? So we've completed a circuit assuming direct rectification. 170 volts is getting to the to the all-in-one DC. Now let's change this um, so that if you have a, if you have to step it down, we need to step it down. So what we do here is we basically we're going to take this off and we'll leave them here because we're going to need them. Now our AC is going to come off of here, off our terminal block, and let's do the AC plus first. It's going to come off a terminal block. It's going to come down. It's going to go over. And it's going to go to the primary side. Primary. Secondary. 
Primary is your primary side, is your, is your voltage input. Secondary side is your voltage output, okay? Now we're gonna come off of our AC minus side, and we're gonna come off here, go down, go over, go up, there. So now we have this transformer's energized, and we had 120 volts on this side, and we have our secondary voltage on this side. So now what we want to do, let's see how, how dirty we can make this. Actually, let's, let's, let's go this route. All right, so now we're going to come off of this. There. And then this is the other AC input. There. So now our primary voltage, 110 is coming off of here. It's going through our transformer. Secondary voltage, step down, is going to our bridge. So if you have, let's say we used an example, a 48 volt step down transformer, 120 volt here, and then it steps down to 48 VAC here, then you're going to get 67.8 volts here. So you follow it. We already, we already did this part. We already did from the drum switch down here. So we got, let's assume we have AC here. AC positive, line, neutral, line, neutral. So we got voltage here. Now we got voltage out. 48 volts AC out, goes through our bridge, goes through our cap, and then it comes over to our CNT1 contactor, L3 and L4. And then our, now what, what do we have over here now? We don't, have, we don't have 170 volts over there. What do we have over there? We've got 67.8 VDC. Okay? Um, the other thing that you probably want to do is you probably want to put a fuse in line here. You know, um, let me take a look at their schematic and see if they have one. They probably don't. I don't see one jumping out at me. No. So you could put a you could put a fuse here. You know something happens over here, this thing overloads or whatever, it pops that fuse. You could do it, but it's not shown on the all-in-one that I can see. So anyway, that covers that covers um, rectifying our AC through the CNT1. We did it both ways. We went direct, direct rectification, and we also stepped it down here. And we used 48 volts, a step down transformer, 48 volts as an example. Went through rectification, went through our contactor, and we got 67.8 volts DC over at our all in one DC. So that covers uh, stepping down or rectifying our AC voltage and getting it to the all in one DC.